I was showing you guys without the recording going, this little menu on the right, if you hit this drop down button, you can allow visual styles to be one of the icons here. And then if I click on this, sometimes I like to go to wireframe so that I can see the features inside. And if I go back to my home button, it's going to shift it back around. Now look at my home button. It's got it. It's got the threads back behind it and it's hard to see. It looks disorienting like it's on top up here. But if I make this shaded, you can see what orientation we're in and it's the same orientation because of the way that I sketched it. I didn't sketch it up and down. I sketched it horizontally. So, and this is the front. You can see the front being over here. So we've gotten our first revolution created. And now let's see what we need to put in. The next thing I'm going to do, I've got all my solids except for these rings. And I, and I drew this and revolved this to the maximum size. So I'm going to make these cuts. They're all concentric circles. So I'm going to go to this face and create a sketch on there. And it auto projects the circles. If I don't want this circle in the middle, I can take it out but I want that outside. I'm going to offset that outside. I could offset it, but it wants a distance and I don't have distances, right? So instead of offsetting, let's just draw circles at 1.8, 1.6 and 1.4. So circles, they'll be concentric with this 1.8. I'm going to click on this again. 1.6 and then one more at 1.4 for the flat in the center. Now let's let's turn this a little bit so that we can see what we're doing. You notice the outside has a standing ring. So I'm going to extrude several rings and one thing that you might notice is that it has a depth right here a 0.2 we have two surfaces that are 0.2 deep so here's one cut that i'm going to make 0.2 and i'm going to flip it and it knows now that it's a cut the next one is this and if i wanted to select this i could it's really not going to do anything to a hole and i'm going to change this to 0.2 deep and say okay. So now we have our grooves in here for our seal and we're going to save this one. And now we're going to move on down to the filleted groove on the side. So let me move this over here. What we have is a full semicircle right here in this area, a full semicircle with a radius of 0 0.05 so I'm gonna, I could draw this as a circle with a radius. If it cuts outside in open space, I don't care. I don't have to trim that off and make that a, um, I don't have to trim that off and make that just a semicircle. And I'm gonna show you that now. The one thing that you wanna notice, note though, is that the center of that is right on the outside of this 1.25 diameter. And it cuts. 360 degrees. So now I'm going to have a revolve that cuts 360 degrees. Whenever you have a revolve that goes all the way around, you want to make sure that you sketch it from a center plane. And right now we have no orientation on this part. We could spin this around and it's the same all the way around. So it doesn't matter which plane I use, except I can't use this one. It doesn't go all the way through the part. I could use this one or this one. And I'm going to use this because it's going to put it in that kind of side view for me. This is my front plane. If you look at my view cube and I'm going to select on that plane and then you see the sketch icon come up. So I selected over here in my model tree, model browser, and then I'm going to click on the sketch. You could also say start to start to be sketch and select that plane. Now, when I get here, you remember that magic button of slice graphics? It slices everything where I can see from my sketching plane. Because if I look at this, my sketching plane is actually right in the middle. 
So let's go flip to slice graphics and it's a button on the bottom. The, the function key is F7. And this is only good inside the part inside the sketch. So we don't have a slice graphics for a section view in our assembly. I'm going to show you how we're going to do that in the assembly later. What I'm going to do immediately is I'm going to project the geometry that I want it to snap to. So let's say I draw it on the top here, or I could draw it on the bottom, one or the other, but not both. We're drawing half of this. And then it's dimension from the end. It's 0.7 from the end. So I'm going to draw a circle snapping to the outside diameter, and it's coming out a diameter. So before I set that down or type in any number, I'm going to right click in space and go to a radius. Now you have to watch out because the next time you draw a circle, it's going to default to a radius. So I'm going to put in a 0 0.05. And that's what it says right here. It's a radius of 0 0.05 and it says fillet de groove. That just means it is a rounded cut. So we have that dimension. All we need to do now is locate it. And that's 0.7 from the end. Now, if I hit R for revolve, it's picked up that. So we're going to pick up the profile and I'm going to select the circle instead of just one half, just because I want the entire thing in case it's offset. I want the entire thing to cut. And it wants an axis. I did not project any geometry for the axis. So check this out. I'm going to click on the axis button and I'm going to go over here and this is popped over on my screen. It would normally look like this. So select the axis and I'm going to hover over these axes until I find the one that correlates with the axis that I want to rotate around. Now, if you look at this and I expand this down a little bit, it's trying to make a bump on there. And I don't want a bump, I don't want a solid uh, rounded protrusion, I want a cut. So I flip that over to a cut, and then that's 360 degrees. And if we zoom in on that, you can see the edges of that and say, okay. So let's turn this around and take a look. And now I have a full round filleted groove. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create the threads on this and a threaded hole, and I'm going to start that in another video.